Let's talk uh, the restructuring efforts that you just announced in the last 24 hours, uh, cutting 20 percent of your workforce in India, layoffs in China as well, and also a third of your workforce here in the U.S. What's behind this vision as you really try to cut down your costs? Sure. Look, I think uh, this is not necessarily from the perspective of cost. At the end of every year, our management regroups and thinks about things that we did right and what we could improve. We, as leadership, acknowledged these uh, restructuring efforts early part of this year. There are three important perspectives behind this. They are to make sure that we focus on locations and cities that are more profitable. We, lo we focus on making sure that we reduce the duplication of efforts across countries. And third and most important, we make sure that consistently we use technology uh, to be able to serve our customers. But a very important outcome of this is even after the restructuring, we still have over 25,000 employees serving OEO across the world, and we are very thankful to be working with each one of them. How do you make sure you're not the next WeWork? You know, I've been speaking to hotel owners in India that are complaining about inflated occupancy levels, not being paid by the company. Uh, how do you address these concerns and also embrace this growth at all costs strategy? Sure. Uh, to begin with, one of the things that's uh, consistent if you speak to hotel owners or customers across the world is that the proposition of OEO is very valuable for each one of them. Everybody understands that having a large number of independent hotels improved in terms of infrastructure, provide good technology and increase the occupancy is very valuable. For example, here in the United States, asset owners like Priyank Shah or Raj Patel have given five, six, seven hotels to OEO and have seen significant lift in utilization. Our view is to the extent we can provide the right kind of infrastructure and service and deliver good financial results. We have issued our financial results for last fiscal just now. For last three years in a row, we have delivered in our India market, India and Europe are most mature markets, consistent improvement in EBITDA. Oh. For example, last year, fiscal 19 that we're announcing today are audited statements of. You can just go online and find OEO annual report for 19. You can see that we reduced our net losses from minus 24 percent to minus 14 percent on India's standalone basis, and we believe that's the path we will continue to improve upon. Although your consolidated losses did widen. Uh, let's talk about China, 9,000 hotels there, your second biggest market. How has the coronavirus impacted demand and also occupancy? Sure. We are trying to keep, uh, first off, this is uh, definitely a situation that uh, we're keeping a very close eye on. Uh, to begin with, I think, um, among the look that we're taking at, it's too early to be able to give a view as to how coronavirus is going to impact business. But at the same time, we're trying to keep as many of our hotels open as possible, including in Wuhan and in Hubei. We are trying to support as many doctors as well as uh, people who are um, stuck in the province to come in and stay at our hotels and have a convenient experience. Beyond that, we are making all efforts like sending tens of thousands of N95 masks. Um, large number of OYO's employees have donated anywhere from one days to months of compensation like me uh, to support the situation out there. I, I get that it's too soon to know like how this is fully going to affect the company, but how is it affecting the company occupancy rates, for example, right now currently? And I guess what, what would your be, be your sense of how things are unfolding on the ground through the lens of OYO? Sure. I think, uh, generally speaking, as you may imagine, uh, travel is a segment that needs to be very closely looked at in a situation like coronavirus as it was during SARS as well. Um, I think what we're seeing at this point of time is uh, different cities have different results because it's very province-oriented. So the provinces which are highly impacted, like Hubei, uh, are definitely more impacted on occupancy than that of various other provinces that are not as significantly impacted. Uh, but at the same time, there's this new hospital that they've built, uh, which came up in 10 days. Around the hospital, there are a couple of OYOs, which we are mm. serving to doctors and other people coming to the hospital for uh, really low or no prices, thanks to our asset owners. People are really coming together uh, to support the situation on ground as we see it. Ritesh, I, I want to go back to the restructuring and SoftBank uh, as sort of a, a way to look at that. We've all seen what's happened with SoftBank kind of retrenching, uh, you know, the, the next vision fund, vision fund two, if it happens, the money is going to come from them, it sounds like, more than from others. They're not funding as startups as much. For the likes of Oyo, has the runway essentially been shortened? There's not as much of that capital that we saw in 2017, 2018, just pushing you to continue to grow, even if there were big losses. Some of this is about that rationalization, right? Uh, that's a good question, John. I think uh, to begin with, it's important for me to acknowledge that uh, there is a very strong feedback that high-growth companies have gotten worldwide, regardless of who their shareholders are. 
in terms of saying that profitability is the direction that people want to see. And to that effect is what I was telling Seema earlier, that if you see on a year-over-year -year basis, at least our mature markets, we see of our business in three different phases. Phase three is markets which are mature, phase two are markets which just have gross margins coming in, and phase three are markets which are new, like that of US or Latin America for us here at Toyo. So in our phase one markets like India or Europe, we've seen our net losses improve on a year-on-year -year basis. So companies will need to stand on their own two feet. But specific to the question on SoftBank, it's important to know that OYO is a board-run company with a great group of board members. SoftBank, of course, have a representation on the board. But beyond that, we have independent board members like Betsy Atkins and others who drive a large part of decision-making. And the management's view has been, basis these phases, let's make the right decisions for the company. We have a balance sheet of over $1 billion. So uh, we have a long way to go to keep executing on our plan. Yeah, you call 2019 an emotionally tough year. We'll see what 2020 brings for you. Uh, Ritesh, thanks for joining us today. Ritesh, Thank you so much you. for having me here, Seema.